Uh, Jeff, do you want to come to the podium, please, then? So next up is uh, Jeff Bodkin, member of the council. Uh, there, is a there are four working groups of the council, and there is a requirement uh, that the working groups give a, a presentation or report to the full council at least once a year. Uh, and Jeff Botkin is going to do that for the uh, genomic Met genomic Genomes and Society Working Group of Council. And is that? I think we're switching back from the table to the podium computer, so sit tight. Well, thanks. Thanks uh, to Eric and Rudy for this uh, opportunity. Uh, while we get the slides up, uh, one thing I certainly need to do is thank the outstanding staff uh, in this uh, division for their support uh, of our activities and really their dedication to this whole domain. So um, Lori Brody, Dave Kaufman, Joy Boyer, uh, and Nicole Lockhart in particular uh, have been terrific supports. And uh, my thanks to Nicole for her help in uh, my putting together this uh, uh, these slides. Um, so we've had the opportunity to have uh, a couple of calls in an, a face-to-face -face meeting uh, that I'm going to be re reporting on today. And mostly what I want to do is just give you a fairly high altitude overview of the kinds of issues that we're particularly uh, uh, interested in thinking about. We don't have any specific recommendations for council uh, uh, at this point, but uh, a number of topics that we think uh, uh, may deserve uh, additional attention by uh, our group and by the community. Like you said, this is the first time. <laughs> first time the room's being used. I, I know they're scrambling to get sure the slides get up. I just want to warn Gail Henderson that you're on full view now. Part of the WebEx. Oh, yeah. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did you say? We can, Turn we, can, we, 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 we can see you, Gail, but th that's no, not, not uh, here until either, so. <laughs> Well, what am I doing? How many, how many fingers? <laughs> Uh, Wait, how do I turn it off? Uh, <laughs> put a sticky in front of your camera. Here we go. Is it, is it Wait, like that? Yes, You're that gone now, it. Gail. So just mute your microphone for now. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay. Getting close here. Uh, there we go. All right, thank you. So here's our uh, working group. Um, excellent group of folks to be working with, a variety of disciplines, uh, all except that one fellow in the front who uh, was not just trying to gain some luster by associating with our group, but uh, came uh, kindly to give a presentation about uh, um, the uh, uh, strategic plan. So here's our charge, and I'm not going to go through this in uh, great detail, but I've uh, underlined sort of the key points of uh, each of the elements of our charge, provide input about the LC research program. Uh, provide input about activities of the Division of Genomics and Society in light of changes in uh, genomics. Uh, identify areas of potential synergy uh, with other uh, components of uh, uh, NHGRI. Identify potential synergies or collaborations with other NIH uh, uh, institutes or activities. Um, and uh, identify genomic society issues and activities that are more appropriately done by somebody else. So here's one accomplishment of the uh, uh, group under uh, Lisa Parker's uh, leadership with Pamela Sankar, along with uh, a couple of staff uh, members, Joy and uh, Jean McEwen, uh, now retired, and Dave Kaufman. So this is a publication in uh, Genetics and Medicine on, on uh, an overview of normative and conceptual LC research. So it's sort of a presentation of what is this uh, uh, research uh, about, and what is it, uh, and why is it important. So just a quick snapshot, folks have gotten uh, quite a bit of uh, information about uh, budget. So this is just to emphasize that the LC budget in 2018 was uh, 20.6 million, uh, with 6.5 million available for new grants. So quite a bit of the funding going to uh, the uh, Sears uh, uh, programs. But this is 5%, and it's been consistently 5% for uh, many years. Uh, and to um, Reemphasize a comment that Gail made uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, still, the only institute with any sort of formal set aside for LC research, and uh, this will be a topic I'll touch on a little bit later. But one we really want to think uh, 
uh, seriously about. I believe this is still the single largest uh, set of funding for bioethics-related research uh, in the world. And so uh, really wonderful uh, opportunity. A lot of us think an excellent model for others to be seriously thinking about. Um, so some of the topics uh, we talked about at our May meeting then included a discussion of outreach to scholars in sort of non-traditional LC domains. Now, LC is uh, traditionally uh, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, so we've been, really had a variety of different scholars who have been part of that community for quite a period of time. Uh, but part of the question here is, can we do more work to extend uh, this uh, um, outreach further? Uh, academic institutions, uh, I'm guessing many are like ours, where uh, we're seeing our law colleagues uh, get some pressure. Why don't you begin to look for some outside uh, NIH funding? Uh, fine arts, uh, the humanities are getting some pressure to begin to look for external grant uh, support. And we think, you know, the ELSI program represents an opportunity to bring people in from unusual places that may have something to say about this. And I'm just speaking from my own institutional perspective, uh, uh, with our SEER, we've been able to bring in folks from uh, theater, uh, from Middle Eastern studies, uh, from health economics. Um, communications have been terrific uh, 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 colleagues. So there's a lot of these sort of disciplines that don't traditionally think in NIH terms that might uh, uh, wish to learn more about these opportunities. We had a discussion of uh, race, genetics, and ancestry. Um, obviously, a hugely complex uh, and controversial set of issues uh, continuing forward, uh, important to the whole notion of diversity, but also central to the um, misuses, misunderstandings, and uh, uh, enormous tragedies over the last uh, century. So these concepts uh, need continual um, thought and integration with uh, the science. And so the second bullet here is sort of thinking about are there opportunities for LC engagement and those who are doing genome science and looking at populations and issues uh, that touch on uh, race and ancestry. Um, and perhaps possibility of new programs to address some of these challenges. We had a presentation about the All of Us program and uh, opportunities to uh, um, build on the work that's already going on with that initiative and the LC domain. Uh, they, for example, particularly highlighted the challenges they're having with informed consent in diverse communities. And so there's obviously lots of scholarship out there in the LC community that might be brought to bear to help support uh, uh, the All of Us program in a variety of different uh, domains. Other topics of interest. Um, we will be having in the not too distant future a uh, presentation by Dr. Radit Ravitsky from uh, Canada, um, relatively new member of our group, and uh, the Canadian Institute of Health Research has uh, a significant <clears throat> set aside, as I understand, for LC-related research. So we want to learn how the Canadians are thinking about the integration of uh, uh, these sorts of uh, social science issues into the scientific uh, initiatives. Um, want to think about LC issues emerging from the strategic uh, planning uh, meetings, uh, and also begin to think about the issues that will be confronting us as genetics moves from what I would characterize as more of an information-based uh, set of uh, uh, outcomes to interventional clinical protocols. We're seeing that now, of course, uh, uh, gene editing protocols are reaching clinical uh, science, and we think there's going to be potentially some interesting LC issues as we make that transition into uh, uh, interventional clinical trials. Uh, forensic uses of genomic and genealogical databases, uh, very interesting. Um, I want to review what else he's already done in this domain. Um, we've already heard a recent publication uh, uh, in this domain, but I know I've had at least a number of calls from folks who uh, are particularly interested in uh, uh, where this is going. Evidentiary standards for use of genomics in clinical medicine and public health. Uh, it is an ongoing challenge. Uh, again, as we learn more about associations, when do these, when ought we judge these to be ready for uh, prime time and integration into clinical uh, services? Uh, specifically, as uh, uh, LC issues from polygenic uh, risk scores uh, from large uh, data sets. You know, as we heard from Eric's presentation, uh, a hot area of science. Uh, a lot of findings coming forward. Uh, again, when might these be uh, useful? from a uh, 
uh, clinical standpoint, and when might they be uh, misused, uh, uh, used inappropriately in certain contexts. And then an issue that I touched on very briefly uh, at our last uh, council meeting that uh, at least has me somewhat alarmed, and that's the use of genomic technologies, gene editing, if you will, by non, this says non-traditional research. So the whole gene hacking sort of phenomenon, the, the gene editing in the, the bedroom or the basement uh, notion. And uh, um, do we need to take this whole domain Seriously, is that somebody else's job, or is this something that uh, uh, the genome uh, world here ought to be uh, taking a careful look at, mostly to make sure that there's not uh, the development of uh, um, technologies, organisms, approaches that might uh, pose a significant threat uh, both to individuals and uh, potentially the public's health? So strategic planning, um, we will not be, uh, we want to monitor what's going on as folks give uh, input uh, during the strategic planning phase. What are folks saying out there about the LC uh, domain? Uh, uh, what would the community like to see in terms of how this program uh, uh, evolves uh, over time? And then perhaps we'll be able to provide some input uh, later on in the process uh, of a more substantive uh, nature. <clears throat> Um, more specifically, uh, there's going to be a strategic planning session at the American Society for Bioethics and Humanities uh, uh, in October uh, that's in uh, Disneyland. All right. Uh, that was my set of comments for this. Uh, do we have time for any comments or questions? Or? Questions for Jeff about the uh, activities of the working group? All right, just stay up there then, Jeff. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Val. So, Jeff, thanks for that presentation. So, historically, I've thought of LC with the first two letters, ethical and legal, in mind. Uh, I wonder, can you give an example of the discussion of your group around the social aspect. Hmm. Yeah, that's a pretty uh, nice question. Uh, I think there's issues that don't involve sort of conflicts and values, but are relate perhaps more to uh, um, the social application or the application in society of a variety of technologies that are emerging. So I think some of the issues around justice and uh, uh, representativeness, uh, uh, discrimination, uh, interpersonal uh, responses to uh, genetic information, how this plays out in the family environment, all of those would sort of be the social context of uh, um, the use of genetic technologies and genetic information that may impact individual societies, communities that aren't specifically ethical or specifically legal. So just a follow-up there. Uh, so you mentioned that one of the uh, group of people you uh, interact with in yours is people involved in communication. And I wonder if uh, the social aspect uh, has involved uh, talking about interactions between physicians and patients with regards to delivery of genetic or genomic information. Yes, very much so. Uh, I mean, our particular center is uh, focused on genetic screening issues, and we spend a lot of time thinking about new tools to help people understand the nature of the choices they have, particularly around issues uh, such as newborn screening, prenatal screening. Uh, there's a huge gap in uh, good tools out there, and many of the tools that are being developed are developed by industries or the test vendors as opposed to independent sources. We also know that clinicians are not up to speed in many circumstances with uses of these technologies. Clinicians up to speed with uh, state-of-the-art tools, and so, you know, brochures we uh, uh, science has shown uh, repeatedly aren't the best way to educate anybody. <clears throat> so, what are the new tools that might be uh, uh, useful? So, uh, apps, videos, uh, online uh, modules. I mean, a variety of different things out there that might uh, substantially improve uh, uh, how these things are integrated into actual clinical medicine. Gail, did you have a question? I, I, I didn't have a question. Do, 
Is my hand raised? <laughs> In the no, but then I thought I was hearing some clicking sounds. So just make sure your phone is on mute then, please. Someone else? It, it's been on, it has been on mute. Okay, it must be someone else. Thank you. Go ahead, Jonathan. As you know, there's a lot of concern about misuse of polygenic risk scores um, across races and ethnic groups. And I was wondering if you have any comments on, on activities in that area to, to address misuse of these scores. Uh, I don't. That's not an area uh, that I have uh, um, particular background in, but I'm wondering whether Gail uh, or Patricia might have comments about that set of issues. Sorry, also not my background. Yeah. Gail, any thoughts on that? So um, this is, sorry, because I, I didn't hear the whole question. <clears throat> my question was that, um, was relating to uh, misuse of polygenic scores uh, and uh, using them to compare across race and ethnic groups, and they're really not calibrated for that. Um, but I think we're entering into a period where there, you know, there's a, a real concern about people doing social har harm by, by misusing this context. And I was wondering whether the LC community is, is thinking about ways of, of tackling this. So it's not my area either, but I think you're suggesting something that's clearly very important. And hopefully the fact that you're doing it in a public forum is going to um, generate some interest and maybe proposals. Thank you. Sharon. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to comment on the the, the hacking, uh, the science hacking. Um, Comment. And, and I would say it, it's gone on in many disease areas where parents or patients have felt frustrated by the pace of research, and it hasn't always been negative. So I, I do think it's important for the committee to kind of look at some of the um, examples from other disease areas and not view it solely as this incredibly scary thing. Um, I mean, it is. it can be very scary. I'm not saying it's not, but I would just say that certainly there are frustrations on the levels of, of parents and patients with severe disorders who have thought they should take it in in their own hands and not always with a negative outcome. Okay, and I appreciate that. And uh, I think that that's probably a more balanced set of considerations than what I had uh, commented on. I think that the... Uh, um, the role of the citizen scientists, engaging communities, people who are dedicated to finding uh, progress, a cure for uh, their child's disease, all of that has had uh, tremendous value uh, in the field over time. So uh, I think there's those very significant positive elements. You know, the thing that seems to me perhaps a little bit different is the real kind of wet lab environments that folks are developing and potentially uh, altering organisms uh, in ways that might might pose a threat to the community that probably hasn't been as much a component of other uh, historical uh, examples here. So I'm noticing all the screens have gone blank. <laughs> so Michael, if you're... No, he's okay. He just put it in the last PowerPoint slide. He's just right. And it's... Oh, okay. Very good. Thank you. Other questions for Jeff? 